Hello again, this micro lecture is on the links between electricity and magnetism. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Now, let me start off by saying magnetism is not the same thing as electricity. They are two separate phenomena. However, the phenomena are very much related. In other words, there is a very strong link behind them. And that's because the underlying kind of force is actually the same um, underlying force that causes or comes up in two different ways. So based on that, let's look at uh, or do a little quick recap or review. And that is that we looked at the examples of electric fields before. Namely that if you have a charge, that that charge creates an electric field and that's what causes other charges to be attracted or repelled. We also looked at magnetic fields. Namely that if you have a magnet, it creates a magnetic field and that is what causes other magnetic things to be attracted or repelled. Well, it turns out that if you have an electric field or a magnetic field, and it's not just sitting still like this, but it's changing. So you're moving the magnet or you're weakening and strengthening the magnet or the charge somehow, that the changes in electric fields and changes in magnetic fields create the other thing. So what that means is a changing electric field will actually create a magnetic field. So an electric field that changes in this kind of battery and wire here, will actually magnetize this and create a magnetic field. And a changing magnetic field, although I don't have an example up for you, will actually create an electric field, and this will actually be how power is produced normally. So to put this more simply, moving charge, which is a changing electric field or causes a changing electric field, creates a magnetic field. So if you move a charge around, it creates a magnetic field. Similarly, if you move a magnet around, it creates an electric field that can interact with charges. So in this case, um, what's happening is you can use one, an electric field, to create a magnetic field, and you can use a magnetic field to create an electric field. So an example of this is if we take a little bit of current, or actually not a little bit, a lot of current, so some charge moving through this wire here. So this is a wire, it has electricity passing through it, and that's going through paper. So you imagine you're looking down on a paper and this wire is going into the paper and it kind of comes out the other side. We just can't see the other side. But if you do that and you run current through it and then you sprinkle iron filings, we get a circular magnetic field pattern. So what that means is a wire that has charge flowing through it creates a magnetic field. So like I said, moving charge creates a magnetic field. And that actually leads us to the cause of all magnetism, which is all magnets have moving charge in them. Now, it's not like a bar magnet has like a power cord plugged into it, and so it's being electrified in that sense, um, and therefore creating the magnetic field. But down at the atomic level, there's charge moving around, and that's what generates the magnetic field from a permanent magnet. So let's look at that a little bit more. So if you imagine a nucleus, and I haven't like drawn all the charges and protons and neutrons and stuff in it, but if we just imagine a nucleus, and then we imagine an electron, and this obviously isn't a scale. The electron, we think of it as orbiting around. Now, it doesn't actually move in a circular orbit, but it kind of has a, an area that we'll call an orbit toll. Well, in addition to that, it also spins. So it's got this kind of rotational movement that we can think of. Now, it may not be actually spinning around in circles like you or me kind of twirling like a ballerina, but we imagine it as doing such, and it's doing some behavior that is similar to that. So not only are electrons kind of moving around, generally speaking, maybe not on a clean path like this, but they're also spinning, and it's actually that spin that generates a magnetic field. Now, the direction it's spinning, so if you imagine it spinning clockwise versus counterclockwise, so this one being counterclockwise, this one clockwise, um, the direction it's spinning will actually determine what direction the magnetic field is. We actually call this one over here an upspin. The way you tell that is you curl your fingers in the direction it's spinning, and you notice the direction your thumb points, and that means it's an upward spin. This one we'd say a downspin, and the reason why we say that is because you curl your fingers in the direction that it's spinning, with your right hand that is, and it happens to be that your thumb points downwards. So in this case it's an upspin and a downspin, and each of those um, are determining the direction of the magnetic field. So with a downspin we get a magnetic field where north is downwards, and with an upspin we get a magnetic field where north is upwards. So again the direction of their spin actually determines the direction of the magnetic field. 
Now, those of you who have taken chemistry may know that usually there are enough electron pairs spinning in opposite directions, much like this one and this one are spinning in opposite directions, that those magnetic fields end up canceling out, meaning that you have one upspin for every downspin, and they basically cancel, so things usually aren't that magnetic. However, certain materials like iron, cobalt, and nickel are a little bit different. That is, they have a few extra unpaired electrons, a couple extra up-spinning electrons. And as a result, it generates a magnetic field. So a magnetic field that's not canceled. So it's kind of a net magnetic field. And so this is really the source of all magnetism. It's moving charge. Um, in this case, it's spinning. But um, the reason why we have things that are magnetic, like iron, cobalt, and nickel, is because of the electrons that are moving down at the atomic level. So once again, just to reemphasize, this means that all magnets are magnetic because of moving charge. It may not be moving that you can notice, but it is movement. That's it for this one. Three to four or more bullet points worth of notes. So one to two sentence summary and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. And here are your image credits.